Challenge accepted. Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and today I'm going to make Sanic and Knuckles. As always, I'll start with an armature, but with a wee twist. I want to put a little LED in Knuckles' hand where he's catching Sonic, so I'm going to use this high heat silicone wrapped wire. It's rated at 200 degrees Celsius, which means it's oven safe, and I don't have to worry about catching the old rubber in oven lung cancer that's normally associated with putting plastic in the oven. Now with Bo's set, I'll add some wire for his tail, then get on to building up the body. Now it did take me a few tries to get the proportions correct with Knuckles, and even then he could probably do with a bit more bulk in his upper body, but I'm happy enough with how it turned out given the nightmare that was trying to find non-Rule 34 references for Sonic and Knuckles. Seriously, that Google search was a minefield. Now I don't want to yuck on anyone's yum, and as long as it's not hurting anyone, then you do you, but man, there's... There's a lot of very talented people making super weird adult-only Sonic fan fiction. But hey, if it makes you happy, then have at it. Otherwise, it's time to add the fur, which I'll do by gently pulling with a variety of sharp edge tools before cracking out my bon mama jar of dodgy alcohol and wiping it down to soften some of the sharper scratches and gouges. Then I'll bake it once to give it a nice hard surface to work on so that I can start to add the larger details. Starting with his shoes, these start out as oversized clay beans that get smoothed out into Oxford wingtips, and then I can add those inexplicable Lego pieces on top. Then I'll wrap a couple pieces around the ankle, give it a bit of texture, and the shoes are all but finished. That means I can get started on Knuckles' boxing gloves. Now, I totally forgot that Knuckles wears big mitts, so I was pleasantly surprised when I realized I don't have to make fingers. Instead, I just rolled a big flat blob of clay into a roughly fish-shaped shape, then stuck it onto his arm, added the wrist wrap, stuck a thumb in place, and poked a couple indents into the front and added some spikes. Then the other hand follows the exact same process, except instead of a closed fist, he'll be rocking an open palm. Talk to the hand. Otherwise, after a quick bake, I popped Knuckles off his stand and added a couple of sheets of clay to the bottoms of his boots so that I could make his treads underneath. Then it's time to finally make his head. I'll start with a little ball of foil, then wrap that in a layer of clay. This will be the base of my face, which I can then start adding on to. For the most part, this involves adding a big pointy part at the bottom for his nose and mouth, and then adding progressively larger wormy dealies for his eyebrows until they are appropriately on fleek. And yes, if Hollywood is intent on resurrecting characters from my childhood and turn them into blockbuster movies, then I'm damn well going to use memes from the 90s and slang from the noughties. And then once I've made sure to give Knuckles his angry little half grin, I can press his head into place and start painstakingly adding all the furry little details to his head before completely covering them with his weird head tentacles. Otherwise, I'm back to adding more fur as I've finally built up the eyebrows and face to a density that I'm happy with. However, I've noticed that when Knuckles starts to go Super Saiyan, his spikes stick out and light up, and I think that looks neato. So I'm going to make sure that I make a whole bunch of those spikes as well. Otherwise, with the spikes in place, Knuckles is done and I can get started on Sonic. The unintended beauty of choosing this particular scene to recreate is that Sonic is just kind of a furry ball. As such, his armature is, well, it's going to be an aluminium ball that gets covered in clay. After another anxious Google search, I found some really great stills of the original movie that showed Sonic in his spin attack, and it seemed like there are five distinct segments. So I'll start by making the center line, then working my way to the edge of one side. It's going to be really hard to hold on to Sonic and not smoosh any of the detail, so I'm going to make sure that I finish one side and bake it before I get to work on the other side. Until then, however, to help hold it in place, I'll skewer it from the opposite side so that I can add the fur and subsequent quills. Now you'd think given how much time I've spent making fur in the last little while, I'd be more proficient, but at this point, I'm just so tired of making fur that I'm really starting to half-ass it. Fortunately though, the end is in sight. 
I'll drill a hole into the middle of my cursed thorny blue lotus so that I can mount it later. And now that one side's been baked in the oven, I'm free to handle it all willy-nilly while I work on the other side. I'm also using cosplay for this entire model, which means that I'll never need to worry about breaking any of the quills off since they're nice and bendy. Then with one final bake, my boy in blue is finished and it's time for some paint. I'll start by giving Knuckles a nice once over with the red, making sure to get all the hard to reach places but leaving that crescent moon symbol on his chest white. Oh, Once that's dried, I'll go back over any areas I may have accidentally painted over before getting to work on the smaller details. I'll give his teeth a black wash before they get painted white, and then I'll move on to his cheeks with a beige and his nose with a black. Then I'll get his kicks with a light brown middle, the toe and heel will get a nice dark red, and the fluffy ankle cuffs get a nice vomit green. Then the treads get painted black and his little Lego blocks get painted with a gunmetal gray. Finally, I'll paint his gloves white-er, and then I'll give them a little edge highlighting with a grey wash. His eyes will get a white base coat followed by a purple iris with lighter purple highlights and a black pupil. Then I'll coat the entire thing in a bit of UV resin to give it a lovely eyeball shine. Now I was trying to figure out how best to make his quills look glowy, so I opted for a red to white transition towards the tips. And as you probably guessed, the Sonic Ball gets painted blue, and then the tips get the same transition, but with a blue to white instead. With the painting done, I can insert my little red LED into Knuckles' palm. Now, it's at this point that my planning, or rather lack thereof, starts to come back and bite me in the ass. I wanted some way to diffuse the LED's light, but with the whole thing painted, I didn't want to try and bake translucent clay as a diffuser, so I opted instead for hot glue, and it turned into a sticky, ugly mess. Also, thanks to my brilliant forethought, there's really no way to remove it at this point and try again, so I'm gonna kinda have to try and make the best of this really poor decision. Thankfully though, with a little poking, prodding, and reheating, I was able to get it looking at least semi-passable as a high-speed explosion, which means it's now time to make a base. I'll start by marking out where Knuckles stands by pressing him into the foam so that I can cut out a section underneath that will house my little battery pack. This particular scene takes place in a typical suburban American backyard, which means I need to lay down an over manicured lawn. So I'll start by slathering out a healthy dose of my homemade topsoil. Once that's dry, I'll lay down some splatter protection, cover it in a thin layer of watered down PVA glue, then apply a thick coat of static grass. If you know anything about me, then you know just how much I love static grass. I mean, look at this. Look at how nice that looks. I'll run the cabling through the base, followed by knuckles, then flip it on its side so I can attach my battery pack to the bottom. I'll add a layer of wood chips and brick chunks to act as debris from the house before snapping some stir sticks that I whitewashed off camera. Knuckles is standing amongst the blown out wall of a house, so these little chunks of wood will be my broken house wall. Then a bit more dirt and I'll lock it all in place by misting the base with a little isopropyl alcohol, then squirting everything in a very thin PVA glue. Otherwise everything is finished and no, not yet. I'm not happy with the coloring on the quills and I feel like our characters need a little bit more momentum. In particular, I feel like Sonic's little electricity ball doesn't quite look electric enough, so I'm going to take some of the thinnest gauge wire I have and twist and bend it all willy-nilly. Then I'll drill a tiny hole into Sonic's ball so as I can glue it in place and then repeat this process a whole bunch more times until my Sonic Comet has a pretty impressive electricity tail. While I'm at it, I'll also make sure that Knuckles Knuckles get a few of its own teeny tiny sparks. Now paint doesn't really stick particularly well to bare aluminium wire, so if I want my next layer of paint to adhere, I need to prime it. In addition to adherence, it'll also make a nice white base coat for what comes next. These are fluorescent paints. They normally dry to a pretty nice bright color, but once you start adding a little UV to the mix, you get something real pretty. I'll use the blue to recoat all Sonic's quills as well as give the lightning trail a nice healthy coating, then I'll do the same to Knuckles, Sparks, and Quills as well. The red looks a little bit orangey on camera, but don't worry, because it also looks orangey in person. I don't know, maybe fluorescent red isn't as doable, but it still looks pretty dope. Otherwise, with that done, I'd say we're on with the glamour shots.
As always, a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons that keep this channel churning out tiny nerdy things on a weekly basis, and a huge thank you to my newest patrons, Lisa McKenzie, Chloe Thumper Zero, Dragon Ceratops, Rachel Parker, Pills, Imogen Armstrong, Dying Sheep, Hannah Jacobson, Dave Ticklebear OD, Linastasia Peace Song, The Duck King, Catman, Nicole Leadham, Lauren Prince, and Lance Thorne. You are the bright blue fluorescent paint that lights this channel up. If you'd like to help out, then do all the usual things like subscribing and sharing, and check out the various links below. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>